friends, it's Madison. Today I'm gonna take you through um, glazing this little mug here. So our first step is gonna be to wax our pot. So the wax warmer is on. Um, I like to check and make sure it's at an appropriate temperature before I wax. So about in between the warm and 200 degrees is about where I like to keep it. So in order to avoid any splashing, I'm gonna try to set my piece in gently so I don't disturb and ripple the wax because I don't want that ripple line on my piece. So I'm gonna slowly set this muck in here. Try to avoid those little burps. And I actually like to let it sit in the wax for like a second or two to help that line even out as the clay absorbs that wax. Gently lift it up and I hold it at about a 45 degree angle and let any of those little drips come off. I don't really want to drip all that wax across my other pieces that I'd have sitting here, so I like to make sure all of these drips are gonna fall back into this wax warmer. So I'm gonna lightly turn it to check and make sure it's hard enough to turn over. I don't want any liquid wax um, on the bottom because I don't want that to run up my piece if I turn it over, so it's all pretty hard, so I'm good to check it. Nice even line, looks pretty good. We are ready for glaze. So now that our piece has wax on the bottom, we can glaze it. So it's really important to have a nice quarter inch um, up the sides of wax on the bottom of our pieces. Wax resists glaze in this state, clay is porous. So anything that is not wax is going to get a nice healthy coating of glaze. So it's important to have our bottom wax so no glaze sticks to the bottom. If we didn't wax our bottom and we had glaze on the bottom of this mug, when we fired it in the kiln, it would stick to our kiln shelf. So that's why wax is really important and that's also why waxing up a quarter inch is also really important. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're ready to glaze our piece. So when I walk up to a bucket of glaze, especially if they've been sitting for a while, our contents are always going to settle. So if you can see, I have a lot of water standing on the top of this bucket. So I want to give this glaze a really nice, healthy stir. I'm talking upwards of a minute here to make sure that all of our contents are well distributed throughout our piece. Um, making sure our glazes are well stirred helps prevent like a patchy application of glaze. If you've ever had a piece that kind of turns out brown or you can see clay through your glaze in some areas, it might be because the glaze wasn't stirred well enough. So I'm going to be here for a little bit stirring this and we'll check back in once we're done. Okay, cool. So our glaze is has a nice thorough stir, we are ready to dip. Now we keep our glaze slightly on the thicker side, so we like to teach a quick in and out um, dunk. And that'll be a nice layer of glaze on our piece and it'll give nice good coverage. All right, so now we want to dunk our piece. I like to use tongs to do that. It might take a couple tries to kind of find a comfortable hold on your piece. Um, and give it just a nice even pressure, make sure it's stable there, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna do a nice quick in and out dunk here. I don't wanna linger in and out. The longer you stay in a glaze, the thicker your layer on your piece will become. So we just want to avoid lingering. We want to avoid um, thick glaze applications. Okay, so you can see how our wax resisted glaze, which is really important. If we hadn't have done that, we would be sitting here cleaning all that glaze off the bottom. But you can see we still have a couple little drops lingering behind. I'm gonna use a sponge to clean those off. So I'm just gonna sponge all of that glaze off give it a nice clean bottom. Even though we have wax on the bottom, if we left those droplets on the bottom of our piece, it will still stick to our kiln shelf. So it's really important to clean that wax or that glaze off the bottom of our wax. Cool. Nice. So our last step from our tongs, we have these two kind of prong marks here. Once your glaze is totally dry, I like to just take my finger in here and smooth that out, just to avoid any sort of like pimply marks on our piece. I'm gonna do it on the inside too from our prong, and that should heal up and be good to go. I have a couple little pinholes that I might smooth out here. 
I like to do any sort of sanding over glaze buckets or even over our glaze cleanup bucket in the sink just so all that dust that we're making goes back into the glaze where it goes into water. Sweet! And there's your mug!